Hey, good evening, um, my lovely home language class. Um, it's now quarter past four, 28th of September. It's also D-date for submitting assignment two. And I've been having lots of emails with queries. It seems like it's become a day for crashing laptops and um, can't video laptops and only audio laptops. Um, I wonder why I didn't check this out beforehand, but hopefully you're gonna solve all those issues and get your presentation recorded somehow, audio or video. Um, I'm quite sad that quite a few I haven't got cameras on your laptops. I'm not too sure why, um, because then that means I can't see you. But um, I'm sure as long as I can hear you and I can see your presentation, that sort of counts. Um, I'm going to have to forego this opportunity of getting to know the Joshes and the Ruinas and all the other people possibly that um, cannot actually use their cameras on their laptops. But um, anyway. If you had Zoom, it would be automatic. It's what I'm doing tonight. Um, you can share your screen. It's, it's changed, in, it's converted easy to an MP4, uploaded onto YouTube with no problem. Um, but it's maybe something that's too difficult. And I was just saying to one of my students, maybe you must really do workshops on how to use a PowerPoint and record using the camera as well as using YouTube. I'm, I'm not YouTube, using Zoom. Okay, so let me stop talking and get on with tonight's learning event. Let me share my screen with you quickly. Let's get rid of that. Let me go share screen. Get my PowerPoint up and running. Just, here we go. It's all on SlideShare. And let's get this learning event going. Yes, it is week eight. How can you believe it that you've got four more weeks to go and um, semester two will be tatters and um, this is our last um, session with um, unit two um, the looking at different writing resources um, next week should have been assessment but I think I might just give you a bit of notes but we're going to go right into starting unit three next week with the critical literacy so we are not going to do a formal thing on writing assessment this will also come into the assignment three, where you have to go to design a writing paper with the rubric. So hopefully the notes I give you next week can actually feed into assignment three. Um, so we start critical literacy, unit three next week. It's a Zoom session, so you can join me as well. So if you have a look here, we've got our lovely image with um, pondering on what we can do in the classroom, thinking it through. And what writing resources do we need? Do we need another textbook? What do we need? No, we don't. We, I'm giving you 10 ideas for creative writing um, using different writing resources, often not even using very much, don't even textbook. You can actually just use a lot of creativity within the classroom. The big thing is to get your learners writing. That is the most important thing. And what writing resources can we use? Also my spreadsheet, you can just ignore this if you want to. But if you have a look at week six, that was last week on Sunday, submitted at the FETs, 54 of you, you can see the numbers are going down. I think people are getting tired. And 88, which is the same as last week for the SPs, maybe that's my constant number. So far for week seven, nine FETs have done week seven, um, week 17 SPs um, for submission on Sunday, the 3rd of October. And we'll still get the numbers for assignment two, and I'll still have to get the final numbers for assignment one. So keep up the good work. No more sad faces. We're not going to have that anymore because I think you're all trying your best. I can see you're all very, very um, stressed with TP, some of you, um, other assignments, um, and I'm sure you're totally stressed. Although I think this is actually quite, the assignment two is actually quite a nice thing to do because this gives you a chance to put your PowerPoint together, which is not very long, and then speak it through. The three questions are not too difficult. Please don't have the same ones for SP and FET because there'll be too many similarities then, although it is only counting for five marks. Okay, let's get on with this. So unit two, um, writing, we've gone through the three first sections. Tonight, we're going to look at writing resources and how do we create effective and appropriate writing resources in the classroom. We're going to look at 10 of them. Ferreira's got a section in chapter 11 on page 161, looking at different kinds of creativity, structures, introductions, conclusions, well, different kinds of transactional writing. So this is a nice resource again. Get your Ferreira's out and check what she has to say. 
Um, I've learned very much on vessels, and I'll give you the reference for this later. It's wonderful from all the skills from speaking to listening to reading to writing with lots of practical ideas which you can implement in the classroom. I'm very creative as well. So although it is a 2010 edition, it's a third edition, um, practical guide to facilitating language learning, I would really suggest it as well. It's a nice resource to have. So the assessing writing is going to become just a note. Um, it won't be a formal lecture. So this is my outline to try and prevent boredom in the classroom. You don't want your students to come in and yawn because they have to write. No more boredom. These writing activities will keep everybody motivated. Writing resources for every stage of the writing process, right from brainstorming, a lot of feedback so that revising can take place before the submission. That's what we're going to focus on tonight. So I'm going to do this in groups of three. Um, first diary writing, then classroom letters, then a whole combination of, of short dialogue, strange stories, speech bubbles, and headlines. Then pictures with differences, letters of advice, um, agony auntie type letters, picture strip stories, completing cartoons, Looking at class newspapers, how we can actively use that in the classroom. Completing stories with its, an introduction, with its conclusion, with its middle paragraph. Completing forms, which is so important. You always have to complete forms. Even if you're going to do a LinkedIn profile, you have to know what to fill in on those forms, online forms. And we're finished with fast writing. Why is that important? And this is my vessels, practical um, guide to facilitating language learning. There it is. Um, get hold of it if you can, um, get it from the library, try and download it, do something, but it's actually got lovely ideas in it as well. Okay, let's look at diary writing, the first one, number one, um, this encourages learners to write about the experiences, the thoughts, their feelings, and it's about them, so it could be anything that they feel they want to write, it might be a topic about my first day at school, and just writing about that, or my last day of school or my birthday at school. So get them to talk about the experiences and their thoughts and how they felt. But often students don't have enough words. So how can we help them to develop this informal way of writing to express their feelings about their thoughts and how they've experienced things? So this will get them practice in writing and they can develop creative writing skills through this. But we should also respect their privacy if they don't want to share something with us about our class or something that happened. They can write about good experiences. Um, if you've written about a good experience, it's always nice to go and read them later on and think, oh, especially Facebook, the um, memories that come up and read happy and sometimes sad things that we actually remember from years before. Yeah, we've got an image here where she's busy looking in her diary and she can see things that she really loves, like her mom, of course about love, about the sisters, about school, which got sad and a happy face, but things that she's not too happy about is possibly her brother, okay, and what she hates is maybe pimples, well don't we all, but these are things that we can learn to write about and we can go back and read about them and think about happy times. Also our bad experiences and our feelings, um, gives us a chance to look back objectively at what we have been writing about and make sense of these experiences once they have been passed. I had a strange little conversation with one of my students who wrote me a very horrible letter after um, the mock release, um, very critical, blaming for being unfair and very impolite things. And um, I haven't forgotten his name, I haven't forgotten any of the names. And he wrote me such a delightful letter, um, asked me about something now and I said, oh, I can see you've got a happy face on now, which is much different to what you were before. And he had this whole reflection. He said, no, he was in a bad place. He was angry, he was upset. Um, so it's actually quite nice to look back on times when things weren't going well and how we can adjust in the way we react to them maybe. Okay, here's your diary. I hate school. You might say I hate PGCE, some of you. Um, I'm scared of maths. I did bad in maths. Um, I got to do something and it was very embarrassing. So go back and look at this and say, well, oh, at that point I was really battling with equations, but gee, I've really got it waxed now. So it was maybe good that I learned to do that, that got that skill going. Or yes, it was embarrassing when I slipped down the stairs in front of my friends at school, but um, yes, I'll learn to walk properly and hold onto the banisters next time. So these are things that you can actually learn about coping with things that are embarrassing in your, in your life. I'm sure you've had a few of them. 
So the sort of diaries are speaking about how you can give them enough words so they can actually develop writing their thoughts and their feelings with, with more with words that actually really register what they're trying to say so they can do it more precisely. And one way we can do this is different stages of this is that we can get them to put a whole lot of words on a list and do a spreadsheet, for instance, sport, travel, animals, love, city, friends as words. And then for them to put four words underneath that on the spreadsheet to try and depict that sport, what they feel about it. Also to look at different positive words, like, I like that. Wow, that is really cool. Um, I was so happy when that happened. It was amazing, all those things we say when we're using positive words. But what about our negative words? Like, definitely not. Oh, my word. I would never do that. Such a ghastly person. Okay, all the negative things we say. Um, terrible PGCE. Okay, or well, amazing P PGCE. I hope there's some amazings out there. All right. Um, then you compare again. This is this whole thing of getting feedback, not just sitting by yourself. Go to your friend and say, these are my four words for sport. What be yours? And um, then I go into groups of four, bigger groups, just turn around and make a group bigger, then maybe groups of eight, and look at the different words that different people use. And then you can add to your list from those words, especially words that you really liked and you found were interesting. Um, yes, yeah, so example of a spreadsheet, happy, sad, gentle, harsh, young, city. And there you can see under city, you've got traffic, you've got poverty, you've got traffic lights or robots, as we call them, skyscrapers. And now you go to your friend, what has your friend got for city? And you add to it, or maybe only one you like, go to the, the foursomes, go to the eights, and you can add to your list. And you can maybe get 10 good words that you maybe want to scratch some of your words off. Um, for instance, for nature, you don't want vast. You want rather have lush or cool or temperate. You want to have other words rather than the words that you chose. Okay, so it's one way you can get a collection of words going, and it's quite nice and social and collaborative learning from each other. I like tables. I can write about myself and friends using tables. Um, I can, first of all, go and choose pictures that remind me of myself or them of themselves. So it doesn't have to be you. It could be a picture that maybe it's someone swimming, and that reminds you of yourself. Or maybe someone climbing, or maybe someone singing. Um, it could be a representation of you. Maybe it's a rainbow, maybe it is a storm, maybe it is a sea and reminds you of you, that kind of picture. Or you can draw what could be, um, I love bangles. Um, so I could maybe draw a bangle or I could draw beads. I could draw someone running, which I really enjoy. I love the sea, I love sunsets, I love sunrises. These are things that are I could use to depict me. Then you write a paragraph describing yourself, your personal characteristics, right? Things inside of you that you're kind, nice, loving, and physical. You're tall, you are slender, you're dark haired, you are green eyed, whatever you are, you could actually write about yourself, your physical characteristics. And then you can draw your personal coat of arms, which would quite be quite fun. If you look at the South African coat of arms, it's just male. I mean, you can draw a female in there, but you can go and Google coat of arms. You get lots of blank ones and you can depict different parts of yourself. Maybe what you look like, maybe things that you like, maybe things you dislike, maybe things that are important to you, your values, love, God, um, your beliefs. Okay, things that you, you really, and then your motto at the bottom. Mine is the Nike one, just do it. Yes, don't mess around, just do it. Um, you could have a little motto which you could think about that you would like to make your motto. But this could be quite a nice creative thing, um, your whole coat of arms. Also, you can go and work with a friend doing this, or maybe three friends, but me, I'm 14, Marcel, I wish I were, maybe I know I don't really. Things that I like are water, sport, food, and animals. I do like animals, I do like water and sport. My dislikes are potatoes. Yes, I don't like potatoes. Angry people, I really don't like. Homework, I don't really mind. Uh, what can I add to that list? I dislike... Um, Messy people or cups been lying around, my son not picking up his clothes. Those are the kinds of things I don't like. But then let's go to what Jackie says. Um, what does Ayanda say? He likes rugby, cats, dislike, sorry, rugby, cats, fast food, and judgmental people. I think we all feel the same way. So you can go and complete a spreadsheet with your group. You can pass the paper around and everybody can write. Can you see me writing all the time? Um, doing these things together. Things we don't like, things that we like. Okay, 
Then you can do classroom letters, which is quite fun because you've got a real audience. It can be even to another class. It's nice to have an audience. Someone is going to receive your letter and you're going to get the letter back, which makes it quite exciting. We don't have letters today. We have email and text, but we can do letters. Teachers got two boxes. Um, in the one box, it's each of the students in the class times three. So there's three people that are going to get your name. All right. If you pick out your name from the box, you've got to pick out another one. Then she's got another box with three things you've got to find out about that person. And so the learner will take out three names um, and one piece of paper with three kinds of information that they've got to find out. Um, it could be things like um, birthdays, when's your birthday, what's your second name, do you have brothers, sisters, what's your favorite languages or what do you speak, your favorite mobile, mm -hmm. is it iPhone, is it Samsung, your, your favorite music, what do you like, books that you've read, I'm busy reading Harry Potter now, can you believe it? Um, food that you enjoy. Okay, so Jackie and Yanda are the names that I've got from my, my listing. So I've got to go and find out what's their favorite dish, what food do they like, what are their pets, and what do they dislike? So those are three things I'm gonna go and find out about Jackie, Yanda, and Thomas. So I'm gonna write three letters to each one of them. So step three is to write those letters to those people and to ask the questions to find out about them. So this is my example to Jackie. Please, could you tell me what your favorite food is? Can you also tell me whether you have any pets and what you really dislike? And you see they're practicing the asking of questions. You're sincerely a yonder. Then Jackie will write back to a yonder. All right, so you'll get three letters back. You will write three letters, still classroom letters. Um, once you've received this information from, from all of them, you're going to record all the information that you've got. So you'll formulate a form, something like that. Oops, let me go back. Their name, their date, their personal details. You might only have their pets, their favorite food, and what they dislike. So you don't have their hobbies, their likes, any family details. So you might have to go to someone else who also got Jackie. Remember, three people got Jackie and find out what information they've got so you can complete your form about her. OK, can you see collaboration happening and you're getting real information and real audience because you've got to complete your name at the bottom because you've got everything about Jackie, everything about Thomas and everything about Ayanda on your three forms. All right. So you can exchange your answers, but you can develop this from this your own thing. So from this, you can send out an invitation to someone in the class, um, possibly inviting them to the movies with you. So you'd have to have your dear Ayanda, your main point, would you like to come to the movies with me? And you give on your second, your supporting points, what movie it is, the date, um, the time, the place, all the details about it. And then the final way ahead ending in your little letter would be, please let me know by tomorrow at 10, um, because a mother needs to book at the movies for Saturday, whatever it might be. Okay, your best friend, Jackson, okay, or a letter of congratulations is quite nice, someone scored a goal, someone got full marks, someone um, has got a, a win, won a prize, um, whatever it might be, congratulate them, what you're congratulating them for, why are you congratulating them, and then what would your final letter, or final part might be, can I please come and study with you next week because we're having a mass test and you've scored full marks. Please answer yes or no. Your best friend, Jackson. Okay. Okay, beginning on to number three, short dialogue, strange stories, speech bubbles, and headlines. So first of all, this is why it's good to have magazines and newspapers in your classroom for them to, to tear out of. Get them find an example of each one of these in a newspaper, then to write their own. So they might have their torn their picture of a cartoon, then they can draw their own cartoon, their own little strange story, lots of strange stories in the newspapers that they can cut out, um, speech bubbles in cartoons, different headlines that they like. Then again, in pairs, compare with each other what your short story was, what your, um, your, your dialogue was, and correct and revise, which is all part of the writing process. Then you can share the examples with the class and you can even act out your dialogues or your, your comic strips as well with the class. Here's the start of one, perhaps. You look cool, to, you look cute today. Um, she says to him and he says, thanks. So how can this conversation continue? Or something like this, a short little dialogue. A says, hi, I need help, please. And B says, where are you? And she says, I'm down here. 
he says, down where? Oops, now I'm down there to what actually happened. All right, so this little short acting out things which students love doing. Strange stories. It's a story about Pulani who looked out the window and saw a little strange tiny dinosaur. How strange and unusual. She blinks and the next thing he puts his foot on the glass and she looks so stunned and she opens the window. He jumps in and starts chewing her furniture. She says, no, don't do that. And he says, why not? Why can't I chew your furniture? She says, oh, she bursts into tears. And she says, it's not even paid for. <gasps> he looks, looks at her, he sits down, and says, very well, I won't eat your furniture, but please bring me some wood to chew on. Isn't that reasonable? And then from that day on, they actually lived together. He was happy, considerate friend. And she kept him in wood to chew. Now, isn't that a strange story? Someone come into your house and chew up your furniture. I don't know if you'd be a happy friend. Speech bubbles, you can go through, explain to them what they look like. They can find examples from them in newspapers, write their own little words within that. You've got your speech, your normal speech bubble, your thought, little balls coming down, what a whisper might look like, a burst, which is like for explosions, radio, what it looks like, telepathic, what that looks like. Um, and then you could, using stick figures, create your own little dialogues and speech bubbles. The thought, he's thinking, oh my word, who is that person? I can't bear him. And he says, hi, how are you? So nice to see you. And what does the person respond? So these are all the things, what he's thinking, what he's saying, what the other person's going to say back, which can be quite interesting little dialogues. Going through the newspapers, are oh, so many headlines, internet, you've got access to the smartphone or iPads, whatever you have in your classroom, you can go and look, you can say headlines in South Africa today, okay, and you'll get all kinds of headlines. Headlines about sport in South Africa today, and you get so many different headlines. And yes, obviously, our dear COVID, which is still with us a year later. Um, today, about a year ago, we were, came out of lockdown too, <coughs> but now we are still getting to the fourth wave, and that's what's happening and then you can see there's all kinds of things happening about COVID on the rise. It's been confirmed it's a pandemic now um, and all the things that we can actually get out of newspapers. This is quite interesting using word clouds and I really like word clouds. If you can get hold of an article that's current, copy it, paste it into word cloud and your little word cloud will form. There's breaking news. You can say breaking news South Africa, which I did this afternoon as well. And then you can see at this point, it was on justice and sport and business and technology. Last year, it was pandemic, COVID, lockdown, even Trump going for the elections, deaths, what was happening in China, um, government, this travel year, which is also going to be a big hot topic because we saw on the red list, crisis, quarantine, hospitals, all part of our world. And this was something from South Africa. Yeah, we've got COVID-19 again, a big breaking news, um, Ramaphosa, of course, lockdown, um, new cases. There's even a place here for Makize, who's been suspended. I think he's actually resigned. Um, where Africa is um, back, we've got today presidency. And I think we'd also have a lot about the elections coming up in November. So that will also be part of the election. The ANC would all be part of ENCA News, SABC2 News, E! News. Um, times live. So we would have all these words coming in if we did a word cloud. And from this, we could actually create our own headlines. Isn't that exciting? Take the bigger words and put it all together and make a headline out of it. You can say, yes, a word cloud, create three topical headlines. Um, and this can be a creative writing part, which can go into writing the first paragraph of the news report from that. Number four, I'm describing pictures with minor differences. Go on to Google. Again, our best friend, and you can look for, for differences and similarities in images. And yeah, we've got this narcissism of small differences. We've got how are they the same? How are they different? Okay, they're very different in size, but they're very much the same in height, in hairstyles, in dress, in stance. Um, how would you differentiate between these two people? So what you could do is in pairs again, make a list of the differences and similarities. Then you write about the big guy and he writes about the thin guy, two little paragraphs. Again, you read each other's paragraphs, this whole thing about reading other people's work and giving feedback, make constructive suggestions, 
then you revise your paragraph, then you exchange with another group, you give them your pictures and your paragraphs, and they must decide which one is about the thin guy and which one's about the big guy and give you feedback as well. And you can just Google, and these are all different kinds of differences that you can get. Yeah, you've got two people sitting the same, legs down the same, similar shoes, similar jackets, pants slightly different. Here's another one, two boy and a girl, both looking the same way, um, similar clothes, but different colors, um, hands, their kinetics are exactly the same, um, proxemics, they're close together, similarities and differences. Number five, we're halfway there. Responding to letters of advice, our agony auntie, and this is going to be our Dr. Mercy. Each learner will get an agony letter, or they can also create their agony letters. All right, what has happened? Yeah, we've got a Dr. Mercy um, been written to by Unhappy Borrower, your pseudonym. Borrowed his brother's motorbike and had a slight accident, paint was scratched. But, I doesn't, but he didn't have a license, so the brother can't, com, can't, cl can't claim from insurance. He's very angry, won't talk to me, and I'm miserable. What can I do? Help me, please, unhappy borrower. And then you will respond to the letter as agony auntie, as Dr. Mercy. Okay, and you write a nice response. Amongst that, they give him a lot of advice. Don't ever take someone's car if you haven't got a license a lot of trouble don't ever take anything if you haven't asked and then how you can make amends you can go do some odd jobs go and do, become a waiter um wash the car make the beds whatever you need to do to make money and then give it to your brother um very pleasantly give it to your brother so he doesn't feel uncomfortable about taking the money but you have to actually pay him back for what you've done to his bike okay Picture strip stories, also pin interest, you can get lots of these, um, lots of fun you can have with this too, especially if it's collaborative in pairs, to create the pirate comic strip story, okay, yeah, you've got your thought bubbles, you've got different things that are happening, I think he's busy boiling in the cauldron in the end there as well, so how do you create the stories, each one, I would say first give them all the same comic strip story, they use the pictures to construct the story of what they thought happened, what did the character say, then in pairs they construct it together, they first think about it, think, pair, share, first think about it, then in pairs, and then you share it, okay, um, each, then they go individually back again, because we never, we can never write the same words as someone else, and write our own stories, then my pair and me get together, we correct and revise, then we can compare our story to the original story from the teacher and share it with the class as well, Lots that you can get from Pinterest. Here's a person going for a walk. Dog sees a cat. Start running madly around the tree. At the end, we've got the dog thinking something. Um, and we've got the boy saying something else. So these are the interesting things that happen. Yes, again, a cop chasing a car. First, um, first frame, zoom, there goes the car. Roar, there he goes off to the car, gets off his bike and walks to the car and looks into the car and there's a whole lot of clowns in the car. And what do they say to each other? That's the interesting part. Yes, I think that I think you all do your video games, having great fun, eyes are big, checking out the screen. Father comes in and says, oh, it's time for bed now. You get up the stairs. Um, and what is dad doing when they look down? What does he say? What did they say? Okay, these are where you can discuss this with your friend. How can we make this a nice comic strip about video games? Okay. Newspapers is also quite fun because you can do this in groups as well. Each one responsible for writing a different section of the newspaper. But first thing you can do is actually go and look at newspapers and do a whole formatting list with the kind of things that we will find in the newspaper, get them to do a whole list from the editorials to the cartoons, to the letters to the editor, to the sports page. And remember this can also be done on Google. You can go to the Herald Live from PE, you can go to the Weekend Post in PE, so our Sunday Times, and you can look through online and see what is in the actual newspaper. There's the headline where the heading goes, you've got your different pictures, you've got the different, um, the layouts that you're going to look at and then you can go and look at different examples yeah it's again the headline this is about sport that section this is about school news this is about reports and praise this is about 
um, student life. So we can have all different kinds of articles. So if you think about your second stage, you can get each group involved with different parts of a newspaper. So this group is going to write about the sport, this is going to write about school events, this is going to be write about things that have happened, it's about good things, it's about um, past students, you can get all kinds of different tasks for the different groups. So for instance, the sports page, they're going to all write a sports article for the sports page, all one, everyone in the group has got a responsibility. First of all, is Jody, he's practicing hard for the athletic season, then is the school going to build a swimming pool or why is our swimming pool dirty? Tor Mopo scores the winning goal and someone writes that article. Then the green team wins again in the soccer match and now someone writes about that. And then they write the names at the bottom of the article. Then you read each other's work again, make suggestions, revise. Remember, it's going to go in the newspaper, it's your page. Then you're going to submit it for publication. It goes to your editors. Okay, this is the important part. Two groups of proofread each other's. Okay, so you read, you're going to proofread mine and I'm going to proofread yours. If you find an error in my work, I lose points for my group. So you're going to make sure you haven't got errors and the group that finds the errors are going to gain marks. So you can see there's going to be quite a lot of competition to try and find errors. So you, when you get to step three, to make sure that you have revised well so you don't lose marks. Still newspapers, you can either, if you've got lots of money at your school, you can print out a copy for everybody to get their own newspaper report, or you can do it on newsprint and put it on a table and everyone can go through it and put it together. Um, then maybe the next round, maybe you do this once a month, once a term, once every three months, each group will have a chance to write a different section of the newspaper. Um, you don't have to write about sport all the time and you could publish once a month or once a term or whenever you want to. Here's one called the weekly report and there's different kinds of articles. Here's about exams, here's about college applications, here's about classical literature, here's about another sport match. So these are different things you could have, not only about sport, but also about exam time, about prize giving, about the new tuck shop, about the new menus, things that you could have. You could even have a survey about um, wearing masks to school. So there's quite interesting topical things that you could do for your newspaper. Quite fun, I think. Completing stories. This is teacher can give the start of the story once upon a time, and the students can give the conclusion. This one's about um, completing the mystery. It's only the last paragraph. Um, Julian's mom walks into a bedroom and everything is all over the place. Um, she's, up, she's normally a very neat girl. She's upended everything from her kit bag, her shoes under her bed, which are all normally neat or all, all over the place. Um, and her mother comes in and says, what are you doing? Look at your room. And she says, I can't find my glasses. And you know what it is? If you can't find your glasses, where's mine? I can't find them. Where's the other R? Okay. Um, so how do you end this? So it's an intriguing ending. Where are her glasses? Sometimes it's on your head. Um, sometimes it might even be in your hand while you're best looking for them. It might be in the dust when you threw it in the dustbin instead of the garbage. Okay, different ways we can actually deal with this. This is um, about Kevin, whose mom needs to take him to his friend's house, but he also likes to solve mysteries and she can't find her glasses. So because he likes to solve mysteries, he takes her through the whole day. Um, she had them on when she was watching the news. Then she had them on when she did this and then she went to the garden, but she didn't have them on. So where are her glasses? And it's writing in the final paragraph, where are they? And that's the fun part. It's also interesting ones, it's an introduction about the world with no color. Um, everything's bleak and gray and horrible, colorless. Maybe we can get used to living in a world like that. And uh, what's his name? Norman leaves for school. And all, as he goes out, he sees a single purple flower in this gray, bleak, terrible world from the typical gray vines that lined the walkway and he yells for his mother, what is this one purple flower going to change the world or is it going to drain more color from the world? How are you actually going to complete the story? Okay, interesting stuff. Completing forms, okay, quite fun. You have to learn to complete forms if you're going for your driver's license, if you're going to um, apply for a visa, if you're going to apply for a passport, if you're going to buy something, um, you have to be able to uh, complete application forms. 
So what they could do in groups is decide they're going to advertise for some part-time work for learners. Um, they can decide what the position is going to be and they can draw up the application form. What are the kinds of things they're going to want to know about the person, their name, obviously the age, um, language spoken, I think that should go into it. marital status, they will be single, qualifications, maybe grade eight, health, excellent, previous experience, nothing, references, not your mother or your father, please, maybe a teacher or some other adult that knows you that's not your family, All right, so think about the kind of things you'd want in your application form, here's an example called Pete's Cafe, and they want a waiter or waitress, and there's all the things they need from the mobile. Do they have an ID number? Do they have a driver's license? Very important if you're going to drive and deliver. Marital status, single, please. Qualifications, grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. Your experience, maybe serving at home. And then kind of references, again, maybe from the school principal or the head of department. Then you're going to interview each other, which is quite nice, where you learn to ask the questions and you learn to answer them as well. Um, what questions would you like to ask of the position? Um, what are your COVID protocols? You could ask um, if I've got to deliver food to people in different houses, okay. Also filling in forms, lots of these on the internet you go and download because it's important they learn to know what a last name is. Because some people don't know what a last name is, a surname or a family name and how do they actually fill in forms if they're not sure of that or if they don't know what a postcode is. Um, my first name, but I've got three names. If I say first name, which name do I put down? Home telephone number, maybe how do you say if you don't have a home phone number? How do you write not applicable? What is my mobile number? What is a mobile? Okay, Americanisms, uh, we have cell phones here. Um, driver's license, yes, no, and things like that. So learning to fill in forms. And we're gonna finish off first with fast writing. Um, if you've got one minute to go in your class and you want your students to practice writing, this is the ideal way to finish off a class. Um, it, proves to write, it proves to learners that they can write if they can do fast writing. Now the rule is, Learners must not stop writing and they must write whatever they think. Now, I just realize that what comes out of our brain is a mess. Okay, it's not relevant, it's messy, it's not grammatically correct as we write like that. And this will help them actually to learn to express themselves more fluently. But they must realize that fast writing products will not be flawless or perfectly relevant. It's going to be a mess, but you can go again and revise and rewrite it. They can write for two to three minutes, three times a week. That'll really improve their fluency. You can start up with 30 seconds, um, for maybe grade eights and nines, go up to a minute. It's those last little minutes that you've got. Okay, take out your fast writing files. We're going to write about what we're going to eat this afternoon, or we're going to write about what we did last night. Okay, one minute, let's go and start writing. And then to look at the mess that sometimes comes out and how you can perfect it. Okay, if you can type it, it might be a lot faster. Um, get those words out, okay? And you only learn to write by actually writing. So in all these tasks, you're getting students to write, to revise, to discuss, to give feedback, and to make better. That's what we do all the time, part of the writing process. You have some resources. Um, there's the link for Pinterest. You can go and look there for many, many things on models, how to do things. There's also writing to learn activities from consulate edu resources. There's the website. Also from free writing resources from englishperdue.edu um, and also use of wikis. Um, so a lot of you are also developing wikis to develop your creative writing skills. Here's the um, little, the, the, the page from the webpage from Purdue, the writing lab and lots of free writing um, sources here and interesting articles and exercises. Here's your writing resources from WAC, writing guides, links for writers that you can go and check out. Okay, don't forget vessels, what I said just now. So that's it. We, um, we've looked at writing resources. We've looked at speed writing. We realized how much we love writing, at least I do. Um, the only way our students are going to learn to write is by actually writing. Remember that Writing essays and transactional writing are long writing pieces. These are quick and easy ways to make sure that they are using writing in the classroom in an active way and that it's something that they can use to develop their proficiency. 
Next week, we're going to go on to critical literacy. And um, we looked at that about that in, in assignment one, how the use of um, I and you can include and exclude, how euphemisms can change the meaning of different things, how positive words can influence people positively or negatively, how we use language and to become more critical about how we actually understand language for social justice, for inclusivity, to, to be sure that we are not um, excluding others, that we, we encourage in a more diverse and integrated understanding in the use of language. You can see it's really a higher order skill, but so important as we go into reading and writing and to become critically aware of how we use language. Okay, that's all for next week. It's going to be a Zoom session and I'll see you there. I'm happy submitting of assignment two. Hope you all get it up, up tonight. I can see there are many emails that have been flooding through with issues happening. So let me get to those and um, I will chat to you later. And Josh, yes, I will upload eventually. I always need those reminders, but um, I will get it up and loaded um, forthwith. Okay, take care, stay safe, and I'll chat soon. Bye for now.